the third component of inclusive democracy is democracy at a social level. That means at the micro level, at the level of the workplace, the household, the educational place and so on. In all those uh, places there should be democracy in the sense that there should be equal distribution of power. There should be no distinction, in other words, between workers working in uh, a workplace. There should be no distinction. Uh, there should be, in other words, equal distribution of power between men and women. There should be equal distribution of power between uh, uh, teachers and students or pupils and so on. Um, and finally, we have the fourth uh, component of inclusive democracy, the ecological democracy component, which means that uh, the inclusive democracy aims to create the subjective and objective conditions so, th so that man is reintegrated into nature, society is reintegrated into nature. Uh, this is important because what we have today is a kind of situation where society is separate from nature. We see nature as an instrument to achieve certain objectives. Uh, the main objective is economic growth, of course. And as a result, we suffer the crisis that uh, we have at the moment, the serious ecological crisis. So having seen uh, what is an inclusive democracy and why we need an inclusive democracy. The next important thing is uh, to see how an economic democracy, that is how this basic component of inclusive democracy would work, uh, what sort of institution we can imagine that would secure equal distribution of economic power. Uh, this is important, uh, not uh, in order to prescribe some kind of uh, uh, regime that should uh, follow in the future. Uh, this is uh, silly because in fact it is the democratic assemblies of the future that will decide the form uh, that their institution will take. What we can only do here is to give an idea of why such a system is feasible, how it can work, and make some proposals that would implement all the basic principles I uh, mentioned before. Um, the model, therefore, of economic democracy that I'm going to explain in a moment um, represents also a synthesis, as uh, the whole project of inclusive democracy represents a synthesis. Represents a synthesis of two systems that we have known in the past: the planning system on the one hand, and the uh, market system that we still have. Uh, the basic element of uh, the planning system, or the basic aim, if you like, of the planning system was that it aimed at securing the meeting of basic needs uh, of our people. On the other hand, the basic element uh, that is uh, uh, produced or presented by supporters of the market system as its main strong point is freedom of choice. However, neither of the two systems has worked as in theory. That is, the planning system, the central planning system in the East, has created uh, some conditions so that the basic need, more or less, of all people have been uh, met. But this did not mean any kind of economic democracy, because, as I said before, the decisions were taken by uh, uh, the political elite nor the market system uh, does uh, satisfy the uh, supposed advantage of uh, freedom of choice, because it's ridiculous to talk about freedom of choice when basic needs have not been met. So the question is how we can have a system that on the one hand secures the satisfaction of all basic needs of all citizens, and on the other hand secures freedom of choice. For this, the proposal of the Inclusive Democracy Project is to combine the planning element, which would be especially useful as regards the meeting of basic needs, 
with the market element, not in the sense of a real market like the present one, but in the sense of an artificial market, and I'm going to explain it in a moment. As you can see in this simple diagram, at the bottom of the image, you can see citizen decide. And uh, there you can see that it is citizens who decide production, decide consumption, decide work. In other words, all important decisions are being taken by citizens. This is not accidental because you should not forget that this is a model of the economy which is stateless, in other words, it does not presuppose a state. It's moneyless, in the sense that it does not presuppose money in the sense that we know it today. And it is marketless, in the sense that there is no real market, but an artificial market, and it is basically citizens who decide. So let's move first to the consumption side of the economy. And there you can see that citizens decide, uh, as consumers, how to allocate their income, which income comes in the form of vouchers. That is, citizens, in exchange for the uh, work they offer to the society, uh, they are rewarded with vouchers. Now, we may distinguish here between basic and non-basic vouchers. Let's start with basic vouchers on the right. We can estimate the uh, number of man hours that people have to offer to society, to the community, so that the basic needs are satisfied. Uh, the planners, in other words, on the basis of estimates about uh, what are basic needs and what are basic needs is decided democratically, not objectively, because uh, uh, if you introduce the element of objectivity, then uh, you may easily end up with all sorts of arbitrary decisions. So, democratically, citizens decide which needs are basic and also which uh, should be the level of satisfaction, what should be the level of satisfaction so that a basic need, say food or clothing or uh, whatever, is uh, uh, satisfied. So, on the basis of the size of the population, estimates about the size of the population, and uh, the entitlement of each citizen to uh, a particular basic need, on the one hand, and on the other hand, on the basis of uh, technological averages, uh, we can find out what is the total number of basic hours that should be offered in a community of, uh, say, 30 or 50,000 people, so that its basic needs are satisfied. The non-basic vouchers uh, are issued to citizens who would like to work over and above the minimum requirement that is needed for the satisfaction of basic needs. Let's say that uh, planners have estimated that uh, everybody has to work uh, three hours a day so that all basic needs are met. Then if somebody wants to work more than three hours, either in the same line of activity or a different one, then is rewarded for this with non-basic vouchers we can use in uh, buying uh, uh, goods and services which are of non-basic nature. 